thank you for watching or listening to another message from me, Pastor Alan Pillay from Living Well Ministry. So good to bring uh, a word of encouragement and I hope you are blessed by this. I want to title this message, God's favor, yes. Favoritism, no. I remember re uh, watching a story on the news when a past state leader was seen in public with a Bible in his hand. He was asked what his favorite verse was. He replied, all of them. I thought it was funny. Uh, I thought they were asking one particular verse, but uh, he said all of them are his favorites. I can't fault him for that, actually. Um, I have four grandchildren. I'm often asked by them, Papa, which is your favorite grandchild? I say all of them. And that is so true. As uh, parents, we do know that we can't have any favorites. Yes, there are some children that are more... Uh, uh, responsible, they're more lovely, they're more caring, they have more manners. But as a parent, you know, uh, you can't have any favorites because it just causes more division in the household. Uh, I try not to have favoritism, although that's a bit of uh, a, a difficult thing to do. These are examples of favorites, of favoritism. I think God is like this. All of us are his favorites. He doesn't uh, judge anyone uh, differently from the other. He loves all of us. That's why Jesus went upon the cross for all of us. It wasn't for a certain group of people. But those who receive him and believe him, they have the gift of eternal life or they receive the gift of eternal life. So God has got no favorites in a sense. Or if he has, it's all of us. I think uh, all of us is, are his favorites and he want to pour his favor on all of us but sometimes I know from my own experience we stand in God's way of experiencing his favor as I grow older and I have a chance to reflect on my life that has been passed uh, it's uh, you know I'm nearly 63 and I can look back on my life uh, I could never have imagined that it would pan out as it did it's a good life. It's a it's a life of favor, and I'm grateful to God, and I'm humbled by that. Um, you know, God didn't uh, do that because I'm His favorite. I, I am one of His favorites, like you are. But uh, I do believe that uh, I have experienced the favor of God physically, emotionally, materially, spiritually. In simple terms, I believe with all my heart, God has His and will be good to me always. So what about you, my friend? Take a moment to reflect on your life right now. Are you experiencing the favor of God? Are you bearing much fruit? Is your life one big maze? Does your life seem like two steps forward and ten steps backward? Does your life seem like it's stuck in the mud? I have good news for you, my friend. Don't be discouraged. God is not limited in his favor. He does not rank us in the order of importance, nor his favor is something we must compete with one another to earn. I don't compete for God's favor. I just thank God for the favor he's poured upon my life. And I thank God for the favor he's poured on other people's life. But I don't compete. I've seen people that are more favored than me. And sometimes it can be something uh, that would cause envy. But when you realize God's favor is on everyone for a specific purpose in a specific season, sometime a lifetime, you just have to accept that God is good and fair in his pouring out of favor to everyone. I believe that every child of God who comes to Christ through faith in him has the favor of God. We believe that as we even know we are not saved by anything we have done. We are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. God's favor is his acceptance of us, his grace and goodwill to those he loves. And he loves all of us. The favor of God can be described as a divine kindness or as an act of true compassion on the part of God himself towards those that are needy, undeserving uh, human recipients. All of us, we didn't deserve it. We needed him. We didn't deserve his favor. We didn't deserve his grace. And today, a scripture, the act of God towards unworthy men or women is always referred to as God's grace, which means the unmerited favor of God. 
And most of us know that the unmerited favor of God is something that is God's gift to us. We didn't deserve it. So how do you evidence favor in your life? Favor can be seen and it can be observed. Let me give you a few examples from some Bible verses. You know, we experience and evidence the favor of God uh, by having a relationship with God. Simply, you have a relationship with God. Proverbs 8.35 says, Whoever finds me finds life and receive favor from the Lord. Immediately you find the relationship with God, you find life. And the Bible says you receive the favor of God. I want to say that is a lot for all those who have come and accepted Jesus as the, as the Savior and the Lord. And we receive the favor of God. Point number two, you experience lifetime, not just seasonal or temporal favor. Uh, Psalms 30 verse 5 says, For his anger is but a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. Yes, there are times when, even though we have God's favor and experience it, there are times when we go through difficulties. There are times when we go through sorrow. There are times when we go through loss. There are times when we go to grief. And I want to say to you that over and above all, we experience the favor of God for a lifetime. I want to say that to you, encourage you. Some of you might be having a difficult time right now, but I want to encourage you today. God's favor is not seasonal. It's not temporal. It's over your life for the duration of your life. Point number three, you walk in humility. Isaiah 66 two says, these are the ones I look on with favor. Those who are humble and contrite in spirit when who tremble at my word. God says that according to his word, that you experience God's favor when you are humble, when you are broken in spirit, when you come as an unworthy sinner, uh, not deserving of anything, no favor, but God bestows the favor upon you. The Bible says, and then you tremble at his word. In other words, you are obedient to his word, which is the next point. Point number four, you are obedient to the word of God. Obedience is better than sacrifice, the Bible says, my friend, because when you obey God's word, it's not for his good, but for yours. Proverbs 3, 1 to 4 says, My son, do not forget my teaching, but keep my commands in your heart, for they will prolong your life many years and bring you peace and prosperity. Let love and faithfulness never leave you. Bind them around your neck, write them on the tablet of your heart. Then you will win favor and a good name in the sight of God and man. Not only will you win favor with God, friend, but when you follow and obey God's commandments and do all the things that are there, those that are believers of God know that one of the secrets to success is just being humble and reading and accepting the words of God. Jesus said that if you accept the word of God, you'll be like a house that is built upon a solid rock. And when the floods, when the storms, when the winds come, that house will stand on a firm foundation. We know uh, from experience, the word of God is our guide. It's a lamp unto your feet and a light unto our path. It illuminates the dark paths around us that we have to tread. But God, obedience to God's word gives you favor. Point number five, you walk in integrity. Psalms 84, 11 says, for the, for the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord bestows favor and honor. No good thing does it withhold from those who walk uprightly. Yes, when you walk uprightly, when you walk in integrity, when you don't look over your shoulders, when you do the right things by people, when you are honest in your dealings with people, when you're kind, when you yourself show favor to those that are less fortunate than you, and you walk uprightly, the Bible says that God will not withhold any good thing from you. Last point I want to share, and you are successful. Psalms 9017 said, May the favor of the Lord our God rest on us, establish the work of our hands for us. Yes, establish the work of our hands. You know, when you are successful, that's an indicator of God's 
favor. I'm not just talking about having a lot of wealth. That's part of it. But you're successful. Your marriage is successful. Your family is successful. Your relationships is successful. People look at you and they can trust you. They have you. They know you can have integrity. They know they can take you at your word. You are successful. That is an evidence of God's favor, my friend. So let me explain the difference now between favor and favoritism. Favor is not favoritism. Favoritism, which usually means unfair treatment of anyone who is not favored. Therefore, God does not have favoritism. God does not have partiality. He doesn't treat people unfairly. Uh, and I want to encourage you here today. God does not have favoritism. All of us is his favorites, are his favorites, and he pours out his favor on us. When we think of favoritism, we imagine a place of higher status and less responsibility. Sometimes people who are treated as uh, favorites or treated uh, with favoritism, they can get away with things. I've seen that so many times. They can get away with doing the wrong things, but not God. He doesn't do that for us. He, therefore, he doesn't have favoritism. I believe God showers people with favor as they establish close relationship with him. But I don't believe, as I said, God exercises favoritism. Jesus was the embodiment of everything God favors. Matthew three seventeen, and a voice from heaven said, this is my son whom I love, with whom I am well pleased. What a uh, endorsement of Jesus's ministry right before he could start. Jesus uh, was honored by God the Father and he said, this is my son whom I love and I'm well pleased. Friend, I want to encourage you here today. You too, God can be pleased with your life. Jesus said in John 5, 15, and this is our challenge to ponder this morning. I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. You know, Jesus was driving a divine principle here when he said, when you remain in me and I in you, then you will bear much fruit. But apart from me, we can do nothing. You know, when God divinely enables us, we can choose to live our lives according to his will, according to his way and according to his word. And we will see the fruit thereof. I've experienced that. There were times when I would go astray. I would want to do my own thing. And I can surely say that is not exactly what the good uh, that produced the good outcome. But it was following God's will, following God's way, following God's word that brought us divine favor. Many times there's a temptation to think we deserve his favor, but we don't want to have any relationship with God. I've had many people call me and say, come and pray with me for a blessing. And God wants to bless you, friend. I always believe that God wants to give you his best. But sometimes we need to honor God's word, God's way and God's will in every way to experience a favor. So I believe the secret of God's favor is to stick close to Jesus and then you will be fruitful, which in turn makes you uh, think and acknowledge, I have seen the favor of God. Can you say that? I have seen the favor of God. Uh, I want God's favor over my life, all the days of my life. As the word says, his favor lasts for over a lifetime. I am sure that you want God's favor in your life to say so follow what god's word says jesus said that so simply in john 5 15 if you abide in me and i in you you will bear much fruit and without me you can do nothing and that's a, one of the most important parts principles how we could bring faith god's favor upon our life just abiding in relationship with god and uh, i want to encourage you here today god does not have favoritism god has favorites yes all of us and he wants to shower us all with his favor. So we encourage you today. God, favoritism, no. Uh, favor, yes. You too can live in the favor of God and experience his favor, my friend. And you can have a life that is filled with abundance and peace. Let me close with quotes from uh, Gift um, Gugu Mona, which all uh, deals with favor. There's four quotes. When God favors you, nothing will make you fail. Even when there is failure written all around you, you will gracefully succeed. When God favors you, what is meant to break you will propel you towards a breakthrough. When the Most High God favors you, great things will happen for sure. You will find yourself on top, even if people thought you were a flop. 
You attain and retain God's favor if you are willing to do His will. How true. Yes, God regards all of us as His favorites. He doesn't have favoritism, but He does want His favor poured over you. I'm sure you would love that. And if you're listening to me today, friend, maybe you're going through a difficult time, whatever predicament you are in, God has sufficient grace and favor to carry it through. For whatever problems you're going through, God has a solution. For whatever need you have, God has a vast supply. And whatever pain and hurt you're going through, God has a cure. Friend, if you receive Jesus as a savior, as the Lord of your life, if you ask him to come and dwell in his, in your heart by the Holy Spirit, I can assure you, you can experience God's favor. Maybe your life over the last few years has just been a maze. It's been stuck in the mud. It's been in turmoil for whatever reason. Sometimes not necessarily by what you've done, but by conflict, by tension. I can tell you, friend, Make Jesus the Lord of your life and you too can experience the favor of God. Why don't you ask him to come and be Lord of your life and live in your heart by his spirit. It's simply saying, Lord Jesus, come and live in my heart by your spirit. Let me pray with you. Father, we thank you for divine favor. We thank you, Lord, that you have no favoritism. Yes, you have favorites. We are all your favorites. Thank you that you want your best for all of us. And I pray, Lord, for those that are listening and said, I want to experience the favor of God. And they want you, Lord, to become Lord of their lives, that you will just come in by spirit and live with them as they ask you to do so. And Father, we thank you for the blessing of your word. Thank you for the favor upon my life and upon all that I am associated with. And I thank you. I could not have attained this on my own, but by following in your footsteps. Lord, bless us as we receive your word today in Jesus' name. Let me pray for those that are unwell. If you're listening to me, some of you might not be well. And I believe God heals the sick today. So in Jesus' name we pray. Father, heal the sick. May they be well today, even as they exercise their faith simply by saying, heal me, Lord Jesus, that they would experience divine miraculous healing in Jesus' name. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord smile upon you and give you peace. Have a great week. We'll catch up next time.